Hello and uh, welcome to our presentation. We're going to talk today about compression efficiency and signal distortion of common principal component analysis bases uh, for HRTF modeling. So this is a work done together with uh, Josef Hultz from the University of Music and uh, Performing Arts uh, Graz. Here is a little uh, outline of our talk. I will start with the introduction then uh, present uh, the numerical evaluation and the results and uh, finish with discussion and conclusions. So a few things about uh, HRTFs and uh, principal component analysis. Head-related transfer functions or HRTFs model the frequency response of the outer ears, head and torso for different sound directions. They are important for sound localization and uh, they are used extensively uh, when creating binaural auditory virtual environments. HRTFs are multidimensional and depend uh, on the subject, uh, sound direction, ear, and uh, the time or frequency beam, depending on the representation used. Because of this uh, multidimensionality, it is uh, often necessary to reduce the number of dimensions involved in uh, an HRTF model, so that uh, this can be used for compression, but also individualization. A very common uh, way to do this is using principal component analysis, or PCA, which is a dimensionality reduction technique uh, that is commonly applied on a set of observations of a number of variables. PCA is typically calculated using the eigen decomposition of the observation covariance matrix or using the singular value decomposition of the observations. As mentioned before, uh, there are several studies which apply principal component analysis on HRTF datasets. Principal component analysis uh, requires uh, a two-dimensional matrix, which, in which uh, columns are uh, used as variables and rows as observations. How to shape HRTFs into a two-dimensional matrix is uh, not uh, always straightforward, and therefore there is considerable variation on how this matrix is created when it comes to HRTF datasets. It is reasonable to, co to consider that uh, if uh, we can find uh, a setup for transforming the multidimensional HRTF set into a two-dimensional matrix, this would be quite useful uh, for researchers. And uh, therefore, uh, we decided here to perform a comparative evaluation of the different possibilities that we have encountered in the literature and some more that we introduced uh, ourselves. So let's look now at the numerical evaluation. Here we present the independent and the dependent variables that we used. First, we experimented with the input matrix structure. And in particular, we used two different uh, structures, so what we call the signal principal component analysis and spatial principal component analysis. So the first uh, uses the frequency or time pins as variables in the matrix columns, and the second uses the spatial directions as variables in the matrix columns. We also experimented with different signal transformations, so we used the uh, head-related impulse responses and head-related transfer functions, so time versus frequency domain, and uh, for the time domain uh, HRIRs, we used the uh, minimum phase approximation, but also the standard impulse responses. And for the HRTFs, we used uh, either linear or logarithmic magnitude. We also used smoothing for which I will talk about in the next uh, slide. We replicated uh, our simulations using three HRTF databases, the IRCAM Listen database, the CIPIC HRTF database, and the HRTF database of the Acoustics Research Institute. Just to mention here that for dependent variables, we had uh, compression efficiency represented as the number of components required to, uh, to explain 90% of uh, the dataset uh, variance and spectral distortion, which is basically the deviation between the original and the reconstructed spectrum. So here you can see the smoothing options that we have uh, experimented with. So smoothing uh, was implemented by taking the Fourier transform of the HRTF magnitude and then uh, reducing the number of coefficients used uh, upon reconstruction, So which has a sort of low pass effect, as you can see here uh, in the graph, for uh, different levels of smoothing, uh, the HRTF becomes uh, smoother and smoother. Now let's have a look at the results. On the two graphs uh, that are presented here on this slide, uh, you can see the number of principal components that are required to explain 
90% of uh, the variance in the data set for uh, signal and uh, spatial principal component analysis. So signal is on the left, spatial is on the right, as a function of the smoothing factor that has been applied to the data set for the different configurations that we have tested here. So note that uh, the graphs correspond to HRTFs, whereas the symbols uh, on the top left uh, to HRIRs. In general, uh, the main finding is that uh, the worst uh, so compression efficiency appears uh, for HRIRs, in the sense that uh, the number of components that are required to explain 90% of the variance is maximum. However, this is uh, reduced significantly as soon as uh, HRIRs are approximated using the minimum phase approximation, and uh, in this case they become comparable with HRTFs in terms of the number of components that are required to explain 90% of the variance. The second observation is that uh, signal principal component analysis in general is uh, more efficient than uh, spatial principal component analysis, in particular for the CPIC and the listen databases. On the other hand, we observe that for the RE database, spatial PCR seems to be quite efficient, independent of smoothing, so we have a very few number of components that are required to explain 90% of the variance. So there is a little contradiction here between databases, and uh, we'll come to this uh, in the next slide. So here we can see the spectral distortion results uh, uh, as a function of the number of uh, principal components that are used in uh, reconstruction. On the, again, on the left, it's signal principal component analysis. On the right, uh, spatial principal component analysis. And uh, we see here that, again, uh, HRIRs, so the head-related impulse responses, have the highest uh, distortion. And again, uh, that signal principal component analysis has lower spectral distortion compared to spatial uh, principal component analysis. And in this case here, uh, this is for uh, all uh, databases that uh, we consider. Again, uh, it's interesting to notice that uh, Logarithmic HRTFs and minimum phase HRARs uh, have a consistently smaller spectral distortion compared to the HRIRs. And uh, also, if you focus on the right, on the special principal component analysis, to see that uh, the two configurations, the RE configurations, which yielded uh, relatively few components for explaining 90% of the variance in the previous plot, they unfortunately come uh, at a quite high spectral distortion. So, in the end, uh, this uh, sort of uh, result is not uh, directly usable. Just to mention quickly about the effect of smoothing and signal distortion, so similar to the compression efficiency, smoothing has a positive uh, effect on signal distortion in the sense that uh, when smoothing is increased, spectral distortion is decreased. So let's come now to a short discussion and conclusions. We compared signal to spatial PCR using head-related impulse responses versus using head-related transfer functions, applying minimum phase uh, approximation, and using linear or logarithmic HRTF uh, magnitude, and of course the effect of spectral smoothing. We have found that uh, head-related impulse responses yield uh, the worst compression efficiency and the highest spectral distortion, irrespective of the database uh, that is used. However, in all cases, we found that both improve significantly if minimum phase head-related impulse responses are used. Furthermore, we found that smoothing improves compression efficiency and reduces uh, spectral distortion. We have also found that uh, spectral representations yield higher compression efficiency for both signal and uh, spatial PCR. Also, that uh, signal PCR is, uh, provides better compression efficiency for two out of the three databases and the lower signal distortion for all databases that we have tested. Uh, we found that spatial uh, principal component analysis uh, resulted in good compression for uh, the ARI database, but uh, however that was at the expense of higher spectral distortion. Furthermore, and finally, uh, the majority of the results uh, point towards an advantage for uh, logarithmic versus linear uh, spectral representation. This concludes our presentation, so thank you for your attention.